All right, in this video, we're gonna install the aluminum belly pan on the bottom of the frame. But first, we have to get the A-frame and the rear and the wheel wells all painted up black before we start putting any aluminum on. So, I've got my painting wizard here, Parker, and he is going to use his magic paintbrush <laughs> to paint the frame. So go ahead, Parker. Whoa! Good paint job. Don't hit me with that black magic paintbrush, you might paint me all black. Delivery guy to deliver the insulation just got here, so now we're unloading the insulation. So, <laughs> beautiful morning. Delivery guy just left and he delivered some insulation for our airstream. So, let me show you. Look at that big stock, big delivery, big stock. This insulation is better than the pink stuff and that was a big stock of it so that's all for the floor i don't know if the floor needs that much big stock wow because we have a lot sweet Here's a big roll of aluminum for the belly pan. I've only got enough to do the middle section of the belly pan, which is five feet wide. I didn't get the, the aluminum for the side wraps yet. I didn't need to do that right now. That, that doesn't get put on until after the shell is put on and put down. So I wanted to allocate my money to everything that I need just to get the floor done and the shell back on. Anyway, this is a 0.025. This is the original um, alloy and uh, thickness that was on the belly pan for Airstream. They only come in four, width, four foot width. Uh, I couldn't find it in five foot width, which would have been much easier because I could have just cut out one big sheet all the way as much as I needed and only had like three different pieces on there. But since they don't come in five foot width, width I'm going to have to cut them lengthwise to five feet and then go every four feet or shorter depending on how the frame works itself out. These will just get riveted on. So I'm using 532nd rivets and you want to get the ones with the large flange uh, for the, the belly pan just to make sure it has enough grip on everything. It's going to be holding that up into the frame. I also got 532nd size Clecos. Basically whenever you're riveting anything on you want to use Clecos and what Clecos are is they go in the rivet hole basically hold your sheet in place and then once you get it all set up and sitting in there right, then you can start taking one out and then put a rivet in its place and then start working your way around. And that way you're not fighting with the sheet flapping all over the place or shifting or anything like that before you actually get it riveted in there. For the belly pan itself, we're not gonna do any sealant either on the rivets or around the edges of the aluminum. The reason is, is because for the belly pan, if any water does happen to get up underneath the floor, inside the frame area, either from rain, uh, leaking happening, maybe from the tanks, you want it to be able to escape. And so if you had it all sealed up on the bottom, there, the water wouldn't be able to escape. So we're not gonna seal it all. That way it can leak out, it can dry up. We don't want water sitting on there, rusting the frame, right? That's the problem that we had before, is that the water just sat under there, rusted out our out outriggers and our frame, 
we don't want that to happen, so we're not gonna seal it. When you're putting these sheets on, do you wanna start from the back and work your way to the front? The reason is you want to overlap from back to front. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get started putting these on. Um, I'm just using these Bauer metal shears, electric metal shears. Went down to Harbor Freight and picked these up. They're 60 bucks. Um, I didn't want to get like super expensive ones like Milwaukee's got like $230 ones that I hear are really good, but I'm not doing this for a living and I'm not going to be doing it a lot. So I figured this should be good enough to get done what I need to get done. Hopefully it'll last uh, as long as I need it. And then if it breaks, I got $60 worth out of it. So I'll be happy. All right. Let's get cutting. Yeah. All right, watch out. Let's spring open. That is. Oh. Oh. And a big curled piece of metal. We are going to set the plywood onto car jack. We're going to set our sheet of aluminum on top of that. Then we're going to jack it up, and that plywood's going to hold the sheet of aluminum in place allowing us to drill our rivets and place our clicos in. That'll make it a lot easier than trying to mess around with holding it up with just our hands and drilling and, and all that. So this should get it nice and tight in place and hold it there, make it really easy, hopefully. Okay, this is how I do it. I put this way, oh yeah, and then I put this way, here and then I put it up and it's right here and then I put it up and then I scooch it and then I scooch it again and then I close it. Hoping to get it ready. And then climb. <laughs> So, all right, so I took this sheet of aluminum, which is the next very next piece, and here's the very back piece. I overlapped it by an inch, which is the width of the cross member, the frame cross member that I'm riveting into. That way, I could just use, uh, just drill through both sheets and use one rivet. And again, make sure that you're overlapping so you want this lip to face the back. And so when you're driving down the road, again, water and wind is gonna come this way and it's gonna slip right over that seam and continue on. You don't want it facing the front to where it's coming this way and wind can force water up inside there. So one thing I realized when I got this back panel on is I was holding it up with the wood and so the only places I could get to were the sides of it and so I went down and I drilled and clico the sides and then I took the wood down and then I went across the middle and now I'm doing the, the ends. It's not terrible but I did get a little bit of warping in it because I didn't do it uniformly across the sheet to make sure that it laid flat you know and then kind of forced any wrinkles out as I went along. So you want to make sure that you start at one end and then get all your rivets in slowly working down from one end to the next and that way the sheet can kind of unfold if you will and make sure that there's no wrinkles in it. That's it for the belly pan. Took me three days to get it all in. 
uh, mostly because just laying on the ground on your back, drilling and riveting and crawling in and out and all that stuff takes up a lot of time. As you can see, this last piece, the piece in the very front on at least my trailer, I don't know how many other trailers are like this, the belly pan sheet is actually on the top of the frame instead of on the bottom. And that's because the spare tire goes under here in the front and it kind of sits up inside the frame. So this section here, which is actually part of the A-frame, uh, doesn't won't have any insulation in it or anything like that. It's just gonna have a spare tire in it. Frame in here, I will probably actually end up sealing, getting some caulking or something to uh, seal up right here and here on the bottom, just because that part is exposed and I don't want, you know, water and stuff getting kicked up into there and ending up inside the frame. So I probably, this will probably be the only part of the belly pan that I will seal up and just to help keep the water from getting pushed into there. So the only other thing besides insulation that goes inside the, or goes under the subfloor inside the frame area is Besides the tanks and the plumbing that goes to that is the brake wires, which run from the tow cable to the axles. And they had it running inside here, but I'm thinking I might run it underneath the frame, just underneath where it's exposed. And that way, if anything happens to it, I don't have to take the belly pan off and try to dig around under the floor to try to find a short brake wire or anything like that. Though, Nothing should happen to it if it's inside and protected. So I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Any pros and cons to running it underneath the trailer instead of inside the frame away from the elements? Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it's maybe it is better actually inside. I mean, it hasn't had any problems. So that's how you put the belly pan on. Stay tuned. Um, next, we're going to tackle the tank pans and getting the whole water holding tanks on all the plumbing and all that installed inside the frame. Then after that, we're gonna get the insulation and the subfloor back on. So, exciting stuff. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer them and stay tuned for the next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when the next video goes live. I'm super exhausted right now because I've been hunting all week and working on this thing, so I think it's time to go take a nap.